In this lecture, we would be discussing about uh, capital asset pricing model and uh, basic of portfolio theory. Uh, before going forward, uh, let's take an uh, example of Howard and Amy. Amy invested uh, some money in some stocks and she is quite upset as she has lost the money. Howard asks her what happened. She responded that uh, she thought that uh, some stocks are cheap and uh, she could develop her money and blindly invested in those stocks. Apparently, it's like gambling before properly analyzing those stocks. She dis decided to take a chance and uh, those companies got bankrupt. Then Howard advises her to, to look at portfolio theory and uh, basics of investments. So hope you guys uh, don't fall in, in, in loop as Amy did and uh, properly uh, build up your portfolio and analyze uh, securities uh, in your portfolio before investing. So in this lecture, we would be discussing about uh, basics. It's not detailed just the very basics of uh, portfolio theory to give you an idea and overview about it. So let's look at these three graphs. What do we see? So these three graphs basically tells us that uh, how they, you, know, you have three investments and different standard deviations, what would be your return um, probability. On, on those investments. Now as you can sh see in these, these curve, the shape of the curve is different depending upon on the different factors. What if uh, you, you mix such kind of different stocks which have different standard deviation, different returns, so that uh, your, your goal is to maximize your return and minimize the variance or a standard deviation of your portfolio, right? So that's what uh, it is about uh, building up portfolios. So instead of putting all X in one basket, you choose uh, different uh, baskets and put distribute your X or in your wealth um, in different stocks or different baskets. And how do you mix up? Uh, what criteria you should follow. Uh, we should be looking some of these uh, things in this lecture. So let's take an example of uh, two stocks, a soup, company soup, okra soup and a Boeing jet company. Okra soup company has lower standard deviation and a lower return. However, Boeing jet has higher standard deviation but higher return. So it's something like if you put all your money in okra soup, you are very peaceful, not too much you know, variation, but your return is low. On the other side, extreme side, if you put all your money in Boeing Jet, it's like bumpy ride. Uh, too much of uh, deviation, too much of variance, but your return is high. But uncertainty is more. But what if uh, you mix up these two stocks in your portfolio? All right, so let's say, let's plot these two stocks on, on a graph, um, expected return versus standard deviation. All right, now if we, 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 we can join these two together by a straight line, in principle, um, after uh, empirical research, people have found that uh, there is a curve, uh, slight curve, um, which turns out to be if you try to plot the expected return and the standard deviation of different companies okay, uh, in that um, range. So instead of going in detail on how this curve has arrived, just remember that this is sort of a curve. And the basic idea here is to understand something else. Something else means that how we can combine and what, what it means 
So let's say we're going to put 40% of our wealth in Boeing Jet and 60% in Okra Soup. So what would be our, our return? It's, it's very simple. Our return would be 40%, 0.4 multiplied by 9.3 is the return of Boeing Jet plus 60% in Okra Soup, 0.6 multiplied by 3.5, 5.2. 5.2 would be somewhere between 5 and 6. So that's not a line. So 5.6 line will hit this curve at this spot and then we draw a vertical line onto the x-axis that is standard deviation. Okay. So you see at this point uh, this uh, so you are intersecting the curve at this point. That was basically tells us that if you mix up in that ratio, your uh, return would be that much. Now this curve, what it shows that it shows that uh, say 40% is at this point. But what if you put uh, say 50%, it might be here. Say here, if you put 50%, in Boeing jet and 50% in okra soup. So this curve, you might get a higher return and at the same time you might get higher standard deviation. On the other side, if you put lower means, uh, if you put say 30% in okra, in Boeing jet and 70% in okra soup, so this is 30% in jet, 30% jet, you might get a different, uh, different uh, return and a standard deviation combination. So basically this, this blue line or the curve tells you the different uh, combination of ratios in which you mix up your wealth in these two stocks. Okay, clear? Now let's extend this concept to more stocks. Okay, so we can plot more stocks and we can get this curve. Basically, the, the area under this curve and the line which joins this area, shaded area. So this basically tells you that you're gonna get if you mix up these stocks in different proportions, you're gonna get your return and uh, standard deviation within this shaded area, all right? Now, let's say you have these three portfolios, A, B, and C. So A, B, and C are three different portfolios with the different ratios of each stock, okay? So you see how, um, you can build up a, a number of portfolios just by varying the ratios invest ratios uh, wealth invested in these stocks. You may you might say that okay, I'm gonna invest in ten percent in Amazon, twenty percent in Ford, might say thirty percent in Dell. Then you might say 30, 20, 50, 60. Then you might say 70, 10% in Starbucks. Then you say 10% in Boeing. And then you might say 20% in Exxon Mobil. Right? So 20, 30, 40, 70, 90, 100. And you might say, this is my portfolio B. Like that, you can arrive different portfolios, different ratios, okay? Now here, important point uh, was that we, we the, there is an important term, cons, the short ratio. Short ratio is nothing but the risk premium divided by the standard deviation of your portfolio, okay? Now, suppose your portfolio S 
has expected return on 15% and a standard deviation 16%. Okay. Uh, so as we know that T-bills offer standard uh, interest rate 5%. So that becomes our risk free rate. Okay. Risk free rate. Because there is no risk we assume under T-bills uh, offered by government treasury bills. Okay. Now if you invest 50% in treasury bills and your 50% of your wealth in your portfolio as so portfolio like we discussed portfolios how you can mix up you know stocks in different ratios and make portfolios so such a portfolio is s then your expected return would be uh, by this equation we come out to be 10 percent and the standard deviation percent now what if we borrow okay so we know that uh, our, our if we do not borrow our standard uh, deviation of our portfolio S is 8% and return is 10% but but now we know that these are the numbers uh, what if we borrow and we invest so suppose you borrow the equal amount of wealth what you have initial wealth at the rate of T bills okay and invest in portfolio S what will happen let's look at it so your return would be two times the expected return on portfolio s because you have borrowed the money at the rate of t bills and you invested okay now you since you borrowed so you will have to pay back the interest rate of its free rate so two times 15 expected return on s minus one times five so let's see this return and 25% is very much greater than 10% which was your original return R see so this return was your original return R see after borrowing and even though if you pay back your return is more okay however your standard deviation has also increased from 8 to 32 percent okay but they are the co cost of increased return okay isn't it very interesting so you can you can borrow and you can invest in portfolio and you can make different portfolios right so here we have s you can have s1 s2 s3 s2 s3 and you can check different combinations of expected return and the standard deviation and see whatever is the best suited for you you can borrow and invest so how we can visualize it on graph so let's say we have the a line which is going which is we draw a line okay expected return rf that is risk free rate from this point upwards touching your original your original blue line that is your optimum portfolio line okay optimized portfolio line and where does it touch that means that this is the point of landing or borrowing okay you can visualize this this way so you have increased your standard expected return at the cost of increased standard deviation okay and that's where the the sharp ratio comes into picture your your risk premium divided by standard deviation of your portfolio right let's uh, discuss a bit further here what is the relationship between risk and return okay so as we have seen that RF risk free rate means that we have no risk almost if we invest all our money in T bills and the beta is zero. Beta is nothing but the representation of the risk, right? In market portfolio, market portfolio say that you can collect the what is the uh, market is offering, offering the, the return, the risk. So we say that the beta is one for the market portfolio okay right 
what if your beta is not 0 and 1? What it means that how the return and uh, the risk varies in between. So if we connect a line, draw a line from the RF and between RF and RM and extend this line, this is called our security market line. Okay. So in 1964, William Sharp and uh, John and Jack, they, they did observe the relationship, such relationship between, uh, between the risk and offer return by, by stocks. And they, they published this uh, capital asset pricing model theory for it. What it means that uh, the basic idea behind CAPM is that the expected risk premiums on each investment is proportional to its beta. The direct relationship. Risk premiums are proportional to its beta. Okay. Expected risk premiums are this is R. What it means that each investment should lie on sloping security line connecting the T-bills, this is T-bills and the market portfolio to get the best optimized portfolio according to CAPM. So expected risk premium on a stock R minus R, this is R minus RF proportional to its beta more the expected risk premium market okay so that was the basic idea about the capm now um, capm it offers two uh, it gives two ideas about portfolios so one is portfolio selection another one is the risk about individual stock so how do you make portfolios? How do you select securities in your portfolio? Okay. Basic idea is investors like high expected return and low standard deviation. Common stock portfolios that offer high expected return for a given standard deviations are known as efficient portfolios. Okay. Now investors can borrow and lend money. Okay. So you may have one efficient portfolio better than another efficient portfolio or all of the efficient portfolios. That is portfolio that offers highest ratio of risk premiums to standard deviation that is sharp ratio. Remember we discussed sharp ratio the portfolio which offers portfolio which offers highest ratio of risk premium to standard deviation. Okay, so that is the best portfolio we can choose. Okay. Now the composition of this best efficient portfolio depends on investors assessment of expected return. Okay. Now let's say if your portfolio is giving you the best uh, you know efficient portfolio but uh, uh, your investor doesn't want that kind of standard deviation then you might have to go and choose another one. And that also depends on investors assessment like say for example you if you do not uh, give a proper assessment of expected return and standard deviation or correlations the, the numbers will change okay that's a basic ideas or basic principles of portfolio selections under capital theory now second part is basic ideas for individual risk so what it means that do not look at the risk of a stock in isolation that's important but its contribution to portfolio risk in this theory this is important 
do not look risk of individual stock but how much it is contributing to your portfolio okay now that contribution depends on stock sensitivity to change okay the value of the portfolio uh, stock sensitivity to change in the value of the market portfolio is known as beta so beta is clearly very important uh, in this uh, capital model. It measures the marginal contribution of stock to the risk of market portfolio. Okay. All right. So thank you guys. Uh, if you are struggling with corporate finance, you may contact us for private lessons. And do not forget to subscribe to uh, Lead Professor YouTube channel. You have a wonderful day. Thank you.